Now let us discuss about introduction to Turing machines. We know that the language which is accepted by finite automata is called as regular language. So we can say that finite automata accepts and recognizes regular languages. So likewise the language accepted by pushdown automata is called as context free language. So pushdown automata accepts and recognizes context free languages. So likewise uh, Turing mission accepts and recognizes recursively enumerable languages. Recursively enumerable languages. Turing mission accepts and recognizes recursively enumerable languages. Okay. Uh, first let us see uh, here uh, what is the need of first let us see what is the need of uh, Turing machines. We know that the problem with finite automata is finite automata has limited amount of memory. So if you want to store some complex languages then we have to go for push down automata. Again push down automata recognizes simple languages. If you want to generate a language like this a power n, b power n, c power n such that n greater than or equal to 1 push down automata can't accept the, this type of language. So if you want to accept a complex language then we have to go for Turing machine. So Turing machine is a complex machine. By using Turing machine we can accept any sort of language, any type of language. So in this video we are mainly discussing about the model of the Turing machine, the basic diagram of the Turing machine as well as uh, the formal definition for the Turing machine. First let us see the model of the Turing machine. So any Turing machine mainly contains three components. The first component is input tape. So this is input tape. The second component is read write head. Third one is a finite control unit. First let us see about input tape. Input tape is divided into number of cells where each cell can store one symbol at a time. Here the size of the input tape is infinite. Infinite. So we can store any number of symbols in the input tape. Here the input tape contains A and B symbols. So before and after the uh, string we have blank symbols. B stands for blank symbols. So we can store uh, any number of symbols in the input string. We can store any number of symbols in the input tape. But here the input tape contains only two symbols, A, B. And before and after the A, B, uh, we have uh, uh, plenty of uh, blank symbols. Okay. Here, uh, the next component is read write head. So by using read write head, we can perform read operation as well as write operation. At a time, we can uh, uh, read only one symbol at a time or we can perform the write operation. Okay. And uh, uh, let us assume that read write head is here. So with the help of this head, we can read the symbol A or we can write the symbol. So that means in place of A, we can modify the content. Let us assume that in place of A, we are modifying the content to X. And then with the help of the read write head, we can move either from left to right or from right to left. So let the read right head is at this location. So after that we can move to its right position. So that means we can move to its next position, right position B. Or we can move the read right head towards its left also. So if we move towards the left, then the read right head will be at this position. Okay. So this is about read right head. So what is the advantage of the read right head? It is useful for reading the data, for reading it only one symbol at a time or we can perform the write operation. We can change the content of the cell and after that we can move the read right head either from uh, left to right or from right to left also. Okay. So next here we have finite control unit. So it contains all the states present in the mission. So that we have five states. So all the five states are present in the finite control unit. Okay. Now let us see the formal definition of the Turing machine. 
A Turing machine is defined with the help of uh, seven tuples m is equal to q comma sigma comma tau comma delta comma q naught comma b comma f. So here we know about q sigma and q naught and f. So all these four tuples are similar to what we saw in uh, a finite automata and Bushdoor automata. So q means if a set of states, sigma means input alphabet. Here the input alphabet contains uh, A and B as well as uh, X and Y and B also. Input alphabet contains AB symbols. Uh, input alphabet mainly contains for AB symbols. Okay. Input alphabet. And the next one is uh, Tau. Tau is called as the Tau. Let us see about Tau. So Tau is called as tape alphabet. Input tape alphabet. So what is input tape al alphabet? Here Sigma is a subset of input tape alphabet. Sigma means input alphabet. So if you take this problem, Sigma contains only two symbols. They are A and B. Whereas Tau, Tau means tape alphabet. Tape alphabet means all the symbols which are present in the input tape. So whereas the symbols of the Tau are AB, XY and B. So AB in place of A, I want to modify the content as x in place of b I want to modify the content as y. So tau contains a b x y as well as black symbols also present in the tau. So tau means tape alphabet whereas sigma means input alphabet. Input alphabet contains only two symbols they are a and b. So that's why we can say that sigma is a subset of tau. That means all the symbols which are present in sigma are present in the tau. Here the sigma contains two symbols. They are A, B. So A, B are present in tau also. Okay. Next here we have uh, uh, Q naught. So Q naught means initial state. F means uh, a set of final states. So here also we may have uh, a number of final states. So next one is B. B stands for blank symbol. B stands for what? Blank symbol. Blank symbol is a part of the uh, yeah, tape alphabet. So blank symbol is present in tau also. Blank symbol is present in tau also, input alphabet also. Next, uh, we have one more uh, uh, tuple that is delta. Delta is a transition function which maps from q cross tau to q cross tau cross l comma r. Uh, l means we are moving in left direction, r means we are moving in right direction. Okay, uh, so let us take an example for this delta of uh, let uh, q means q naught. So currently we are at Q naught state. Uh, tau means A. So that means if we apply A on Q naught, let us assume that we are moving to Q2. So that Q2 is nothing but Q. Next one is X. If we read A, then modify the content to X. So here we have A. If we read A on Q naught, let us modify that content to X. And after reading that content, let us move the head towards the right. So now the read right head is at this position. So now the read right head is at this position. Okay. So let us take one more example. Delta of Q naught comma B. So Q naught means this state. Whereas B means tau. Okay. So if we apply B on Q naught. Let us assume that this is one transition. Let us assume that we move to Q1. And modify the content to Y. So if you read B. Then modify the content to Y. Then modify the content to Y. After reading that, after it is over, then move the read right head towards the left. So move the read right head towards the left. So now we have to move towards the left. So likewise, uh, uh, we have to specify R or L. So R means we have to move the read right head towards the right. L means we have to move the read right head towards the left. So this is about introduction to Turing machines, such as model of the Turing machine diagram of the Turing machine as well as formal definition of the Turing machine.